Our last topic in this series is about double summation, or double summation sigma notation. This is what it looks like. So we can have more than one uh, sigma. So we've got two indices here. We're going to sum over the index i starting from 1 and ending at 3, and we're going to sum over the index j starting at 5 and ending at 6. Over here we have the relationship, the mathematical relationship between uh, the index i and the index j. So if I want to solve an expression like this, I can do it one sigma at a time, or I can take care of one index at a time. So looking at this, we have two indices. We have index i and we have index j. So maybe I will evaluate this expression here according to index j first. So I'm going to start with index j, which means that when I rewrite this, I'm going to just keep the index i on, uh, in sigma notation. And now I'm going to evaluate this expression for its j's. And I'll add a bracket here just so sometimes you don't see the bracket. I'm going to add the bracket so you, can, you know that everything I'm writing is going to be operated on with this sigma notation here. And I've got 2i. i is still part of my sigma notation, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it as a free variable, a floating variable unknown. So I've got 2i times 5 plus 2i times 6, right? Our, we begin at 5, that's this value here. We end at 6, that's this value here. Notice that I could simplify this. because we've got like terms, like. And if I do the multiplication first, maybe it'll become a little bit clearer. So I've got 10i plus 12i, and that's gonna be equal to 22i, starting from i equals one and ending at three. Now I copied this and I just put it up there to give myself a little more room. We know that this thing here is equal to that expression, left-hand side equals right-hand side. And now all I need to do is evaluate uh, this thing. So we're going to evaluate our last index i. And when I do that, I'm just going to start with i equals 1. So I've got 22, 1, plus 22, 2, plus 22, 3. And we could even simplify that. Uh, we've got uh, 22 times 1 plus 2 plus 3. So we've got 22 times 6. Oops, not 66, 6. And if we wanted to be kind of cute about it, we could break this up into some multiple factors. And we've got 11 times 12. And if we remember our multiplication tables, which I'm sure some of you do not, uh, the answer, answer is uh, 132. And that's how we work double summations. Here is a summary slide. So we've got two general form uh, sigma notations or two double summations. Usually, usually it's, we just say double summation. Uh, definitions, here are the definitions. So we have two indices, uh, index M and index N, and uh, our endpoints are identified with a capital letter. Uh, again, you won't always see it identified that way, uh, but it's common in economics to see that. Now, an important uh, rule uh, for double summation is that uh, in the previous example, it didn't matter uh, 
whether I evaluated the I, or why well, I should have been in the previous one, it didn't matter whether I evaluated the M index or the N index first. So when we're looking at this expression right here in front of you, it uh, again, they're a finite expression, so it's a specific example, there's going to be an answer. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I put the I first followed by the J or whether I have the J first followed by the I. And it doesn't matter uh, you know, which one I start with. So if I start from the outside and work my way in, which is kind of natural because if you remember the FOIL rule, uh, I'm going to evaluate this expression and we get, so I'll evaluate the I first. So I'm going to have the sum j equals 5 to the 6. And then I am starting with 2. So I'm going to have 2, 2, the j remains, plus 2, 3, the j remains, plus 2, J. And if we simplify that, J is equal to 5, 6, and we've got a 4, a 6, and an 8, and that's going to give us 18 J, and then 18 times 5 plus 18 times 6 is like 18 times 11, and I get 198. Now let me try and just shrink this down a little bit, make that a little bit smaller, give myself some room. Now let's see what happens if I evaluate uh, the J index first. And so we're going to still have our I index. And so I've got 2 times uh, 5 times i plus 2 times 6 times i. And if I wanted to be clear, I could put a bracket around them just to be sure that both these things are going to be operated on by the sigma notation. And we've got sigma i 2 e to the 4 of 22 i. Now evaluate this last indices. We've got 22 2 plus 22 3 plus 22 4. And that's like 22, 2 plus 3 plus 4, 22 times 9. And the answer is 198. So it doesn't matter which index you evaluate first, you'll get the same answer either way. Here are some questions for you. See if you can answer this question, which of the three formulas below are correct? And at least one of them is incorrect. So press pause on your video, try it yourself, expand this expression, starting with the M index, and then, do, then start over and expand it starting with the N index, and see w which of A, B, C are correct, or is correct. Let me start by evaluating the M index. So I would have N equals 2 to the 4. And I'd have 2 times N times 8 plus 2 times N times 9. And that would be equal to 
16n plus 18n. I'll write it like this, or 34n, or I could just factor out the 2, right? I could factor out the 2, and then I'd have n8 plus n9 and got 17n. So looking at my options here, uh, I've got this one uh, looks good. That's right here. And if I look at this one up here, that one down there looks good. And if I look here, well, suppose I evaluated N first. I would have the sum of m equals 8 to 9 times 2m2 plus 2m3 plus 2m4. And so the numbers on this one uh, look good, but notice that the index is wrong. So wrong index notation or wrong sigma. Sigma notation is incorrect. And so D is the correct answer. D is the correct answer. All right, it's double jeopardy. Here's another one. Evaluate it, starting with either indice, index, and see which of these uh, are true. So I'll start by evaluating the I index. So I'm going to leave J. And for each I, I've got 4 is where I'm starting. So I've got 4 squared times J plus 5 squared times J. And that's going to be equal to 16J plus 25J which is equal to 41j. So if I look at my work, this here is what I see there. The sigma notation is correct, and so b is correct. So it looks like I should have had b you know, following a, but we'll just leave it the way it is. So b is correct. Now let me... Uh, 9j, uh, no, so that doesn't, that doesn't look like it's going to be correct. Now I want to evaluate whether a is potentially correct or not, so I'm going to now turn my attention to index j. So let's evaluate this with j and see, um, see what we get. So I'm going to have the i index remaining on the outside. And this is going to be equal to i squared times 2 plus i squared times 3. And I'm going to collect my like terms, and I've got 5i squared. And we've got the correct notation over there. We've got 5i squared here, and so a is correct. And so it looks like the answer is D. Both this one and this one are correct. And this one here is 